day, everybody. I feel like it's been so long since I've seen you, and it really hasn't. We saw each other on Friday, but sometimes that stretch from Friday to Tuesday feels really long, and I miss you guys. <laughs> it seems like a big, long amount of time. It's really just a couple of days, but yeah, I missed you guys. Hi, Motocrafts. Hi, Anita. Hi, Sharon. It's so good to see you guys. How are you doing? Hi, Suzanne. So, Sunny Moba, Mobile, Mo, Mobile. <laughs> You're in Alabama, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, Katie, hey. Oh, gosh. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Dawn. Yeah, Dawn says I got here right from the beginning. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, gosh. So, you guys. I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm going to just because you guys are so smart. You guys are so smart and you know when there's like something not right with me. You can tell like from a mile away. You can tell. So total transparency. I got my first shot yesterday, which happy dance because I feel, you know, I'm relieved. But at the same time, I'm feeling very not 100% today. I'm a little tired and a little achy. So... I don't feel 100% today, and I know you guys will notice. So I just want you to know that I am 100%. My body is just not. <laughs> I'm just feeling a little bleh, but, you know, it's all good. I really, I kind of feel like I need to be on like a, you know those taffy stretchers? <laughs> That's how my body feels. Like I need to be put on a taffy pull. <laughs> it's all my, my body feels like this. So, yeah. But it's all good. I mean, it's fine, right? The alternative is worse as far as I'm concerned. So, all right. So, Joan is in the house. Joan's already doing her job because, you know, she does a whole lot more work than I do. Guys, give Joan some love. Like, she seriously, I couldn't function without her. She's already on the ball today. She has signed up for a text message updates. I completely forgot to do a text message update this morning. And that's because I don't feel super great. Um, but if you want to sign up for the text messages and get those notifications, please do so. She has pinned the number. All you got to do is just text to that number, put your name or I don't know. Hello. How are you doing? Or, you know, <laughs> anything you want, anything you want. You don't even have to behave yourself. Like you can be naughty if you want to. I don't mean like don't send me nude pictures, but I mean like you, you can be yourself. Okay. I don't know what's happening today. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, yes, we do love Joan. Hey, Marsha. Marsha, where have you been? I feel like it's been a minute since I talked to you. Miss your face. Miss your face. Okay, so on top of that, other things to mention are um, if you, if you feel like... <laughs> If you feel like you want to give to the tip jar, you can do that as well. So you can give via PayPal or you can give via Cash App. Either one is fine. You don't have to do any of that at all. But if you want to, just know that any of the tips that you do put into the tip jar go back into this broadcast, if you will, and just makes me, it makes it a little easier for me to order all of the things that I need to keep everything going, right? Girl, got to keep the lights on too, so. So there's all of that. Let's see, today's project, I'm excited about this one because it's easy peasy, but the results are so pretty and I love it when that happens. So today we're gonna put together a necklace and I'm gonna show you, it's something we are already doing. We know how to make wrapped loops, at least most of us do, right? And those of you who don't are practicing your wrapped loops. This is gonna be another one of those where you're practicing your wrapped loops, but you're just giving them a little bit different look. And the results are kind of fun. And you can change this up and do lots of fun things with it. So I'm excited to show this one to you. It's easy, but I feel like you will take it and run with it and turn it into amazing things. And that's always what I love to see. So super excited about that. So all you're gonna need for today's project is just your regular things. Be sure you've got some head pins on hand and some jump rings. Other than that, as far as the wire is concerned, we're using six inch pieces of a 18 gauge German style wire. Now that's going to be a little bit different depending on um, what tool 
or what size loops you're gonna make. You're gonna need to adjust the lengths of your wire. But if you're gonna do this exactly the way that I do it, six inch pieces of 18 gauge wire is gonna get you where you need to go. And then of course from there, you can just kind of change it up and do what you need to do, okay? All right, so enough chit chat, let's get down to it because I'm excited to show this to you. So versatile, so versatile. All right, down to the mat we go. Tighten everything up a little bit here. I feel like you guys are gonna fall on the floor. This tripod's get, been giving me trouble for a while now. <laughs> Coral says, oops, I was supposed to practice loops. <laughs> it's totally okay if you haven't. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. So I've pre-cut my pieces. Just a few. I've pre-cut my pieces. I made somebody grumpy the today. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Sam's here. So it says mostly listening while I drive. Hey, hey, no, no uh, jewelry making and driving. <laughs> All right. So I want to show you where we're going. This is plain. I haven't dressed this up yet. We're going to dress this up with some fun things. Okay. We're going to dress this up with some hangy dangles because, you know, I got to have beaded dangles with everything. But check it out, it's just wrapped loops. It's just that we're using a large bell making pliers to do this instead of just our regular round nose pliers. Now the cool part about this is, is that you can do this with whatever you've got. So if you've got um, you know, your small bell making pliers, your round bell making pliers, your stepped bell making pliers, any of the wubbers that are in shapes, I love those by the way, um, or dowel rods, whatever you've got to make a loop or a square or a triangle or whatever, you can do this and make your own little beaded chain. And what's cool is that you don't have to add the beads if you don't want to. You can keep this strictly wire wrapped in the center, forget the beads, and do a really cool metal chain, you know, and then maybe add your beads afterwards as dangles. So super cool. It's really, really easy to do, but I feel like the results are going to be really cool. So this is just the base design, and we're going to take this to the next level. But I wanted to show you just what the difference in the beads makes. So for this one and the one we're going to be working on, I picked these really cool kind of, I don't know, they're coppery, but they also have that AB finish, that really cool, you know, rainbow flash to them and some glass pearls for this one. But for the one that I actually started originally was these beautiful pieces of Amazonite and then some glass rondelles. And it just, it looks so different, right? Like one of them is kind of dark and mysterious where the other one is very kind of natural, earthy. We're, I'm gonna add leather to both of them, but you could do the entire piece, you know, out of this chain stuff instead of. so. All right, just, just wanted you to see. There's some different examples here. Okay, so let's get to it. This is super, super easy, but it's fun to just kind of hang out, and that's what we're going to do as we're going. So six-inch pieces and your large bell-making pliers are going to be the size that I use for today. I am using the largest mandrel on the large bell-making pliers. You can use the smaller, but you will need to adjust because you won't need a full six inches, okay? 18-gauge wire, I'm using... Um, I love you too, Janice. I'm so glad you're here. I'm using German style wire and 18 gauge. You can do this with whatever you want to, you guys. Just know that that's, that's possible. Just know that when you're making a larger loop, you definitely want to go with a more substantial gauge of the wire. So I definitely probably, definitely probably, what? I definitely wouldn't use 24 gauge if I'm going to make a large loop, just because it would probably lose its shape without work hardening. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. The 24 gauge, you just want to stick with your smaller, you know, your smaller mandrels. But you can go all the way up to 16 or 14 gauge with this. So you can make some really chunky monkey chains. All right, so a six inch piece is what I've got. I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. We're going to start this exactly like we would a regular wrapped loop because that's all it is. The only difference is that we're going to make a little bit of adjustments in our placement of our tools. So since we're making a really large loop, we need to come down. Normally, we would start right about here, okay? We would start with, um, you know, an inch and a half to two inches. We need more than that. So we wanna come down roughly, let's even get the, oops, I just dropped the ruler in the trash can. Let, let's get the ruler out, because it's, it's gonna be almost half. 
So two and a half to three inches is how far you're going to want to come down on that, okay? And then you want to give it a bend to make your seven. It's a backward seven for me. It's probably going the right direction for you. But that's what you want to start with. Um, there was a question about the beads. Let me grab my little gauge and I can tell you. I believe that they are six millimeter glass pearls. They are. Well, they're on the small side, so they're more like a five millimeter pearl. And then the rondelles that I'm using are the, are, are four by, oh, hold on. Come on, little dude. Four by five. So a four by five rondelle and a five to six millimeter glass pearl will do, okay? So thank you for that question. It's a good one. I always forget to tell the bead sizes. So thank you for reminding me to do that. Okay, so now we're going to follow the same steps that we always do to make a wrapped loop. However, instead of using our round nose pliers, we're using these large bell making pliers. Um, Tony wants to know what is the difference between the wires. I Don't let me forget that. Okay, let me get through creating this little guy and then we'll come back to that. So don't let me forget to answer that question because that's always a good question too. All right, so I'm gonna come in with my pliers just like I would if I were using the round nose pliers. But of course the bell making pliers, guys, they're not tapered, so it doesn't make any difference where I place the wire within the jaws of the tool, okay? Because it's always gonna give me the same size loop no matter what. And I want the mandrel that I'm gonna be using to be on the top. So since I'm using the largest mandrel of the tool, I want that to be on the top and the small one to be on the bottom because we're gonna wrap around this top one to make our loop. So we're gonna hold the tool stationary and we're gonna take the wire and we're gonna go up and over that top barrel of the pliers, okay? Let's see if I can get you at a different angle here so you can see. It's a little bit better. Okay, so this is what we've got. Now, just like a wrapped loop on our round nose pliers, I need to get this wire over here to the other side to finish our loop so that it's nice and closed. But I can't do that because this bottom barrel of these pliers is in... <laughs> Marsha. Marsha says, I've been hitting the gym. My wiggles are much firmer now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I looked up right at the right time. Okay. So in order to get this wire over here, I need to move this out of the way. And so just like with our round nose pliers, all I'm doing is just rolling, right? I'm going from this position to this position. So I didn't even have to take the wire away from the tool, okay? I just adjusted, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take the wire over to the other side. And before I remove, I do give it a little tilt, just a little tilt. That kind of helps to straighten up my straight piece of wire, okay? So taking this off of the tool, now you can see I've got this perfect little loop and I have got my wire coming out this side where we're gonna wire wrap. I'm gonna put it back on the tool to do that. I just want you to see what size our loop is gonna be. So there was a question asking about the mandrels on the large bell making pliers. So the large mandrel is a, this one makes an eight millimeter or it is eight millimeters, which is gonna give you about a seven millimeter loop, okay? The smaller one is a five millimeter. It's gonna give you about a four millimeter loop. So whatever it measures with your gauge, it's actually gonna be about a half size, not quite a whole size, but about a half size um, smaller. And then also, Keep in mind, the thicker the gauge of the wire, the smaller the loop is going to be, okay? All of those things kind of go into um, the mathematics of it, which I try to stay away from because I don't math much, but, you know. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to put this back on the tool just so that I've got it to hold on to. And I've moved it over here to my left hand. So I'm gonna use my right hand to do my wire wraps. And you can you can use your pliers if you want to, or use your fingers. I'm gonna wrap around about three times, okay? And then take that off. So all we've done is just made a wrap loop, you guys. We just used a different tool to do it. We don't do that very often. And um, I just want you to know that your tools, you know, use them. If you've got them, use them for things, right? Get a little, think outside the box a little bit with, with some of the other things. Because the bell making pliers are made for making bales. But that doesn't mean we can't do other things with them, right? I like to make bubbles with them. We'll do that on an upcoming project. So I haven't done that in a while. You guys like that one. So, all right. 
we've got our loop ready to go and now we're going to thread on our beads i see another question what's the difference between the bell making pliers and the six step looper so i don't know i, I don't know i don't i'm not familiar with the six step looper but i am familiar with this is backwards <laughs> talking and beating at the same time okay hold on I'm gonna thread on one of my beautiful rondelles and then a glass pearl and then another rondelle so I'm not familiar with that tool but if it's anything like the stepped bell making pliers it just gives you more options as far as your sizes are concerned so your bell making pliers you're only gonna get oops another tool in the trash can. You're only going to get two options for your sizes, right? And with the small bell making pliers, it's the same. You're going to get, they're just smaller, but you only get the two options. But like with the stepped bell making pliers, you get six options for sizes. So you're going to be able to get a two millimeter loop all the way up to a nine millimeter loop, depending on where you place your wire on the tool. So I don't know if that's the same as the tool that you're talking about, but that's, you know, that's my two cents on that. <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm having a day. Okay, so we've added our beads to this. Now, I want you to remember that I said you could do this without beads, okay? So you don't have to do this part. If you want to skip the beads and you just want it to be wire wrapped, you would just start at the top of your, your wraps here. And we'll do one of those just so I can show you here in just a second. But let's finish this one first because I feel like it's taken us a minute to get to this point. <laughs> Okay, now we want to create another loop on the opposite end of this. And so just like we would do with a regular loop, right, a regular wrapped loop, we're going to come in with our chain nose pliers. Normally, when I am using my round nose pliers and my chain nose pliers as a combo to create a wrapped loop, you guys are probably pretty, if you've been watching me for a while, you're pretty used to me doing small, right? I do a small loop and I use the tip of my pliers quite frequently, right? I very rarely come back to the back of my pliers because I want everything to be nice and small. However, because our wire is a little bigger and our loop is a little bit bigger, we need to make an adjustment here, okay? So instead of grabbing our wire at the tip, because that's where we're gonna fold our wire over, I need a little bit extra room. So I'm just gonna come back on the tool a little bit, okay? Because it's tapered, that's gonna give me more surface area of that wire that is inside the pliers. That just means it's gonna give me a little bit bigger area to accommodate for this 18 gauge wire and those three wraps. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, so you just want to come back a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit, and then go ahead and bend your wire over the top of the pliers because, again, we're letting the pliers do the measuring for us. So when we take the tool away, we already have the space here, right, for our wrapped loops because we let the pliers do that for us. Okay, now we're going to come in again with the large bell making pliers and we are going to do our wrapped loop. Something to notice though. Okay, because I want to point out all of these little differences, okay, because I don't want anybody to get tripped up, particularly our beginners, okay. So something that's going to be a little bit different is you're going to notice that we have to accommodate for the size of the mandrel, so we have to come over just a little bit. So normally with our round nose pliers, I can get right up in there, right? There's since they're small I can get right in there, but with these guys because we're working with a large mandrel, it is off centered just a little bit and that's going to make your loop off centered just a little bit but we can adjust all of that so come in with the tool get it as close as you can see how it's actually touching that bead at the top that's as close as i can get it to the actual wire and same thing take the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers come on around Okay, now same thing, I just want to rotate the pliers so that I can take the wire over to the other side. But here's what happens. See how my loop is off center? So if I take it off of the tool, this is what I've got, which is not what I want, right? That's not pretty. That's a really weird thing. <laughs> That's not what we want. So before we take it off of the pliers to center all of this up, I just kind of give it a little wiggle, 
right? And we're all good with the wiggle. I just very carefully, just kind of slight motion, I grab on and just bend that wire to straighten it up a little bit more. That may make your, your tail go out crazy, but that's okay. What we want more than anything is that loop to be centered so that our straight piece is not over here to the side, okay? So back on the pliers it goes. I'm gonna switch hands and then I'm gonna do my wire wrap between my loop and my bead and then wiggle it right off of the tool and I'm ready to cut off my tail, okay? And really that's all there is to it. We're gonna keep going because we're gonna do this a few times because I want you to see it a few times and we're gonna wire wrap them together so we're not gonna be using any jump rings to connect them. So that's also, you know, worth seeing. But let's back up for just a second before we move forward because there was a question. Yeah, breaking the neck. That's what you're doing when you're when you straighten it back out. You're breaking the neck, which is a terrible term, but that's exactly what it is. So <laughs> let me move you guys down a little bit more so we'll brighten our light back up. So there was a question about what is the difference between the wires and I get asked this question a lot and I never get tired of answering this because we always have new people and this information is really really good information um, so for those of you who already know the answer to this just hold tight or find something else to do for just a second <laughs> and let's talk so I use German style wire for all of my wire wrapping and when I mean wire wrapping I mean my intricate wire wrapping where I am binding wires other wires together or when I'm just doing things like making loops. And the reason that I use the German style wire is because it is a, uh, it has a temper to it, okay? It is a half hard medium temper wire, meaning it is not dead soft. Dead soft wires normally have a copper core or are aluminum, and those are things like your artistic wires, where it's dead soft. Why does that matter? It matters because that temper is what's really going to help you to control the wire and get the best look out of what you're going for. And if you don't believe me, I... I encourage you to try a wrapped loop with a dead soft wire like artistic wire and then try the exact same loop with a German style wire and feel the difference. People that I know that struggle with their wrapped loops and can't seem to get them to stay around or they just struggle with them in general, it's normally because they're using artistic wire and the artistic wire is just too soft doesn't have a temper. It's very bendable, malleable, flexible, all of those words. So you need something that's got a little bit more structure to it, and that's going to give you exactly what you're looking for. So that's, that's, in a nutshell, it's all about the temper and the hardness of the wire. Um, but something as small as that can make a huge difference. And I want you to understand that a lot of times your head pins that you buy ahead of time, those have a temper. So if you're finding that you can make a, a wraps loop great with a head pin, but you struggle with your wire, it's probably because your wire is dead soft. So there you go. Just this our little our little lesson in wire for the day. Okay, so we want to make a chain out of this, right? Because it makes a super cool chain. So we're going to add another one to it. We're going to follow all of the same steps, but we're going to snap the two together. So coming in with our chain nose pliers again. And we're coming down pretty far, almost to the middle. Now remember, this is a six inch piece, okay, of 18 gauge wire. So chain those pliers just to hold on to it to give it a nice sharp bend, okay? And then your large bell making pliers are gonna come in. You want that large bell on the top. <laughs> Donna says, dead soft, no bueno. I know, right? Dead, the soft wires are good for other things, but. German style wire is specifically designed for wire wrapping and it really will change the game if you've never played, if you've never used it before. Um, let's see, is German wire good for rings? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> okay, so sorry, I was scrolling through the comments there. Holding the wire, I'm gonna hold the tool stationary and I'm gonna take the wire up and over the barrel of the pliers. So all I'm moving is just the wire, not the tool, okay? Now, I need to get that wire, sorry, you're at a strange angle. I need to get the wire over to the other side. I can't because the barrel of the pliers is in the way. So now I'm just gonna rotate the pliers and take the wire over to the other side and kind of rotate it just a little to straighten it all up, okay? 
And when you take it off, that's what it looks like. Now do take it off this time because what I want is I want to take the tail end of this wire, stick it through the loop, doesn't matter which one, of the piece we already made and just bring them together, bring the two loops together and then just snap them together like that. Super easy. You don't have to pull them apart or anything. Okay, now for the rest of the wire wrapping part, I like to use my bent chain nose pliers, totally up to you. Don't put this back on the tool because now we have this piece in here and it will distort the circle. It'll distort that loop. So don't put it back on the pliers. Come in with those bent chain nose pliers and hold onto that wire right up next to where your, your straight wire is and bend this direction or not bend but hold in your left hand so now you can use your right hand or your pliers in your right hand to do your wire wrapped loops okay you want to do about three and now we've linked those together okay Coming in, I'm gonna use my cutter tool, trim that off, and I wanna trim as close as I possibly can. If you've got a little piece sticking out before you add your beads, come in with your pliers and you know squeeze it down so it's not sticking out. You don't want that to get hung on your clothing, that's the worst. All right, so we have our two loops. Now I'm gonna come back in with some beads. So my rondelle, one of these glass pearls, and another rondelle and now we need to do another wrapped loop okay so this time coming in with our pliers our chain nose pliers and remember we need a little bit more room for those wraps because we're using 18 gauge wire it's a little bit bigger so we need to come back just a little bit okay let the pliers do the measuring for you okay and then bend over the top of the pliers Take it away. Now we've got plenty of space here to accommodate those wraps. Now we're gonna come in with our bell making pliers and we're holding, but we can't get, whoops, we can't get right over next to that wire, but we can get as close as we can. So that bottom barrel is kissing that bead right there. And the wire goes up and over the top barrel of the pliers, okay? Roll the pliers so that now you can take your wire over to the other side, but notice we're off center, okay? So you just wanna give it a little bend to straighten it back up. Break the neck of it. <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna switch hands and I'm gonna do the wraps between our loop and the top of our bead. And Voila, now we've got a little beaded section. And we're gonna go ahead, and come in with our cutter tool, and again, cut as close as you can. If you can't get in there super close, use your pliers, tuck that little tail nice and tight. And there you go. And that's, we're just gonna repeat that, you guys. We're just gonna repeat that. And you can repeat until you've got the entire length of a necklace, or you can repeat until you've got a, a section. So ours for our necklace is only gonna be a section and our section is one, two, three, four, five, six of these. And I chose six instead of five so that we have loops in the center that we can hang our beads from instead of a straight section in the center and our loop, our dangles here. Does that make sense? <laughs> I broke his neck. Now he's dead. He's dead soft and no more wiggle for him. You guys crack me up. <laughs> yeah, I gave him a, chiropr a chiropractic adjustment. That's so much better. Um, but as far as that's concerned, you, you decide where you want your dangles to hang and like if you want them centered or off centered and all of that. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm going to repeat. I'm not done. I'm going to keep going because I know you guys need to see this a couple more times and that's fine. I'm just kind of letting you know this is where we're going. But I do want to show you one where we don't add any beads because there are some of you out there that just love wire jewelry without any beads. And I got to tell you, this one's a cool one. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, we're starting the same way. So we're coming down pretty far to almost the middle, bending the wire. We're gonna come in with our large bell making pliers. We're going up and over, okay? 
rotate the pliers to take the wire over. And then I'm gonna switch hands so that I can, hi Nicole, so that I can do my wraps. And I'm gonna do about three. Okay, taking that off. And there's what we've got. Same steps, but instead of adding beads, we're gonna come in with our pliers just like we normally would. We're gonna treat those three wraps that are there like our beads, okay? So we just wanna do the same thing. We wanna come back a little bit so that we've got a little bit bigger room here to accommodate, bending the wire, okay? And same thing, coming in with the bell making pliers. So up and over. Roll the pliers, take the wire over. Now when we do our wraps, we're gonna meet the wraps that are already there. So it might take an extra, okay? See how I did three wraps here and three wraps here, but then I still have got a space in the middle. So it's gonna end up with seven wraps just to accommodate for that little space. And then you're just gonna trim that off. Now this is fun. This makes a fun little link for just about anything. If you wanted to use this as your component, add an ear wire to it, add some beads down here to the bottom and make an earring, that looks really cool. If you wanted to do an entire chain out of this without any beads at all, it makes a really cool looking chain and you can do it in you know any of the colors of the German style wire that you want to. So it's a cool little extra thing that you can do um, without adding beads to it. There's, there's so many different little tricks that you can do. Now on the back, I do wanna show you, see how it's coming up a little bit? I wanna try to cut as close to where I don't know if you can see or not, but you see that flush cut in the in the wire that has already been cut. I wanna try to cut as close to that as possible. It's still gonna stick up. You see how it's sticking up just a tiny, tiny bit. But if you've cut close enough, you can squeeze with your pliers and put that guy right down in that spot and it makes it as seamless as possible. But you gotta squeeze it with your pliers. Now, granted, it might not be perfect, but it's gonna be pretty darn close to seamless. See, from the side, you can't see it at all. Okay, so there are the little loops without any beads, which is fun. Super, super cool. Now, remember, you can do this with whatever you've got. You can do this with your bell making pliers. You can do it with mandrels that are shapes. You can do this with the Weber's tools. You can do it with whatever you want to, okay? Um, show how to link the two links again. You got it. You got it. All right. So let's keep going. Let's go back to our beaded sections. So I'm going to come in another piece of our six inch wire coming down on the wire to almost the middle. Give our wire a bend. Okay. Coming in with the large bell making pliers. I'm going to go up and over. Rotate the pliers so I can take the wire over to the other side and take it off of the tool so that now we can link them together, okay? Bring you down a little bit. All right, so to link them together, we're gonna take the tail end of our wire, don't cut that off because we gotta use that for a couple of other things, right? We gotta do our wraps with it, but first thing we gotta do with it is use it as our guide. So we're gonna take that tail and we're gonna stick it through the center of the loop, any loop, whichever, wherever you wanna attach, okay? Just use that as your guide. And when you bring these two together, <clears throat> you just wanna kinda of wiggle them just a little bit and they should just snap right together. Okay, it shouldn't, you shouldn't fight with it too much. And you definitely don't wanna open it up really wide. You want as little movement as possible there. So, you know, cause you don't wanna distort that, that loop. All right, so I come in with my bent chain nose pliers just because it keeps the pliers out of the way. That curve that's in there, that's gonna keep those out of the way and in a good position in my hands, okay? And then I'm going to wrap about three times. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in and trim off my tail. Okay, 
Okay. And now we're ready to add our beads. <laughs> it must wiggle to connect. I like it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to thread on a rondelle, a glass pearl. And another rondelle. Uh, okay, so there's a question. Catherine wants to know if the bell making pliers are larger than the stepped bell making pliers. Um, no. I think they're actually a t just a tiny, tiny bit smaller. This one's going to give you a nine. So this is the biggest bell. This is the biggest part of the um, stepped bell making pliers. It's going to give you a nine millimeter loop. The large bell making pliers is going to give you about an, an eight millimeter loop. So they're just slightly, slightly different. Like you can't even really tell that there's much of a difference there at all. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready to do the loop on this side. So coming in with my chain nose pliers, but I've got to come back a little bit. So I've got a little bit more room for the wraps and I'm going to bend the wire. Okay. Come in with the bell making pliers. Okay, taking the wire up and over. Now I need to rotate, whoops, <laughs> or completely let go because I'm holding this at such a strange angle. And take the wire over to the other side to close up our loop, but now we need to give it a little a, a chiropractic adjustment to center it up, okay? Now, whoops, putting it over here in my left hand, and I'm going to use my pliers or your fingers, whichever, to do your wrapped, your wraps, okay? And you want to come in with your cutter tool and trim off. So how do we feel about this so far? Everybody feeling good? Do we want to move on or do you want me to do maybe one or two more of these before we before we finish our necklace? Because I'm good. <laughs> I'm good with whatever you need me to do. I'm here for you. So if you need me to do one or two more, I absolutely can. I do want to make a little... I feel like everything is off today. I don't really know why. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> it is entirely possible that it is just me. <laughs> Oh, all right. So, yeah, I think it's super cool. Let's do, oh, Rain says move on. Ready to move on? Shall we move on? You guys can always watch it in um, replay. Janelda says she's feeling good. Good, yay! Okay, cool. So, let's move on to the rest of the necklace. This part is the easy peasy part, too. We're not really doing anything super hard here, okay? But I want you to see that I put together, let's see, what did I say? Did I say seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, no, six. I put together six sections of this for the necklace so that I've got two loops here that are going to be in the center. You can do this however you want to do it, but if you're going to recreate this one, that's how I did it, okay? Now, for the rest of this, all I did really was just, I just put together some dangles just because I wanted to utilize these loops, but do it one more time. I will do one more for you guys right before we, um, we come back up, if that's okay, okay? So I just wanted to utilize these loops because they're a great place if you want to add extra things, you can. Um, or not, you can leave it and it looks really cool just as a chain, okay? But all I did was just take some pearls and put them on head pins and jump rings. And then I did some rondelles as well. Just some little wire wrapped guys on jump rings. And then I'm just going to attach those to our loops to add just some extra dangles. So we'll do a couple of these and then we'll put all of this together and we'll finish off the back of the necklace. Okay. So all you got to have for this is just some head pins. You are welcome, Catherine. I aim to please, my friend. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to grab my head pins. Okay. And for the pearls, I'm using actually a little bit bigger pearl in this really pretty wine color. It's just a glass pearl. I mean, it's not like it's a super fancy. It's not a check glass pearl. It's just a glass pearl. 
Okay, I'm gonna put that onto a head pin and we're gonna do a wraps loop, but we're doing our wraps loop as just our regular little guys. So we're gonna use our round nose pliers. So first I've got my chain nose pliers and I'm giving it a bend, okay? Bringing the, those out and bringing in the round nose pliers, okay? We're gonna take the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers rotate those pliers so that you can take that wire over to the other side switching hands and then do your wire wrap between your loop and the top of the bead okay and then you just want to come in with your cutter tool and trim off your tail okay and also, just like with the big ones, if, if you can't get in close and your wire is sticking up just a little bit, come in with your pliers and just squeeze that down so that it's not going to stick out and poke you or get caught in your clothing. Okay, so there's one of those. Let's do, let's do our little glass rondelles. So, need another head pin. I need supplies like in the worst way, you guys. <laughs> Like, I'm 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 trying to find head pins in a pile of oh, I'm trying to find head pins in a pile of eye pins because I have literally run out of everything. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> there weren't any good ones in that in that pile. Hold on. Let's get another pile. Why is it that I always run out of head pins before I run out of eye pins? Anybody else have that problem? <laughs> end up with a ton of eye pins left over okay so I found one I'm gonna thread on our rondelle okay coming in with the chain nose pliers same thing bending the wire okay let the pliers do the work for you there's room there for your wraps already so you didn't have to measure or anything crazy let the tools do all that okay round nose pliers coming up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Rotate so that you can take the wire over to the other side. Okay, and I'm gonna switch hands and do my wire wrap. Okay, so there's our wrapped loop. Coming in with our cutter Trim that off. Tidy up the wire. And let's do one more and then we'll assemble everything, okay? So, there's one more. Chain those pliers. Coming in the round nose pliers. Going up and over, rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side, switching hands, and doing our wraps. Okay. Trimming off. We're going to tidy that up, and we're good on that one. Okay. So now, as far as assembly goes, I made it so I'm going to have to reopen these jump rings. So my apologies for that. Jump rings is also one of the things that I am completely out of at the moment. So <laughs> this is why the tip jar is important. <laughs> so I'm using four millimeter jump rings for this. You can use six millimeters if you want to. But the way that I put this together is I put two rondelles per jump ring and then just one of the pearls per jump ring. Okay. And you would just obviously be attaching yours to jump, ring, jump rings now instead of opening and closing ones that you've already got, which I don't necessarily recommend doing. But you would take your, your pliers on either side of your jump ring, and then you just want to use one pair of pliers to twist it open, okay? Don't pull with both pliers. Just use the one and do that kind of lateral twist. And then you just want to attach this wherever you want it to go. I'm going to put this one right here in the middle and then the same movement just opposite to close your jump ring back. Okay. So we've got a double one hanging right there. I'm going to hang just a regular, just, or not a regular, but a single pearl on the loop right next to that. So opening the jump ring, 
threading it on, and then closing the jump ring. And you can fill these up, you know, you can put however many beads you want to on there. Whoops. I do kind of recommend doing this with your necklace laying down though, just so that you kind of keep everything in the same, you know, same side of the loops. Because once you pull this up and put it on a bust, it, it is gonna hang however it wants to, and it helps to get all of your, your beads all on the same side, okay? So I'm just gonna repeat that adding all of our little dangles to this. And then I opted to use leather just because I really wanted to finish this. <laughs> and it actually turned out to be quite beautiful with the leather. Uh, it's a nice accent to this. However, if you want to finish this off with, I did this one, this one's not quite like I wanted it to be. Let's move this guy. Um, so if you wanted to finish this off instead with a smaller piece of chain, you could, or you could be, you could do the entire necklace in these links, which is probably what I would do <laughs> if I were doing this, you know, and I didn't have time constraints. You guys know, like, I don't want to keep you here forever. You know what I'm saying? So we've, we are making the length portion of this leather just because it's easy and it's beautiful and leather goes with everything. Um, but if I were just going to make this as like, you know, a piece to go in my shop, I probably would just bead the whole thing up with the little chain just because I like it. <laughs> but that's up to you, right? Totally up to you. Yeah, a bracelet would be really, really pretty. This makes, it, it makes great little short sections for necklaces. If you just want to, you know, change up the look um, or bracelets or single links of this for um, earrings are super cool. Because you can hang all your little dangles on one of the loops and then the other loop, attach your ear wire to it. It looks super, super cute. So so much versatility with just this little trick. And it's really not even a trick. Honestly, this is something we've already been doing. We've been making wrapped loops forever together, but you can, you know, you can really turn them into whatever you want them to be. And you can adjust the sizes to make them, you know, a little different than what you've been doing. Just, you know, you're teaching an old dog a new trick, if you will. Okay, come on now. So just adding all of our little dangles and you can really fill these up. You could add tons of beads to these if you wanted to. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. It looks really cool, nice and full. Just know that the more little dangles that you add, though, it kind of takes away from your chain design. So that really, the dangles become the feature. So you kind of have to decide what you want your, your true visual part to be. If you want it to be the chain or if you want it to be all your dangles. And that's going to depend on what beads you use, of course. So, all right, last one. Okay, now as far as the leather is concerned, I don't have the cord ends for my leather because I forgot to grab them. My apologies. Um, but I am going to just show you what I would do. So I've got two pieces of leather here and it's just nice. It's one and a half millimeter round leather, nice supple, very soft. And this brown color looks really beautiful with those rondelles. So I feel like it was a good choice. So I've got a piece, nice and long. I can always trim off what I don't need. And I'm going to thread on to one of these loops here and then find the middle, okay? Now, you can wire wrap these two pieces together if you want to. I'm just gonna do an overhanded knot so that my cord is doubled. I always do a doubled cord for whatever reason. You can do this however, however you want to. Okay, and then I'm just gonna tie my knot, and pull it down nice and tight, make sure it's nice and secure. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side with another piece of the leather. 
This, the leather size is 1.5 millimeter. Okay, so find the middle. Just bring your two ends together. Overhanded knot. Now, I didn't grab the cord ends, and I wish I had because I think for this one, what I would do is sort of like one of the kits that we did, I believe it was not last week, but week before last, where we had leather pieces and we put two pieces of leather in a single cord end. I think that's what I would do here. Um, I should have grabbed them. So basically that's, I would just add a little bit of glue to the cord end that would accommodate both of these, slide it in there and let the, the glue dry and then you'd be good to go. But I feel like the leather looks really, really pretty with it. It, um, it was originally just a time, you know, it was just a, a choice as far as time is concerned, but I feel like it, it really is a beautiful choice to go with this. It adds that summertime feel to it. I'm telling you, cord of any variety, leather cord, cotton cord, hemp cord, like that's perfect for spring and summer. It keeps it from being super heavy. The alternative, of course, would just be to, to do the entire length out of these little links. So that's what the finished piece will look like. I'll put this on the bus so you can see it in a second, but I do want to do this one more time, okay? Just one more time for the person who asked, because I know there are a couple of you who maybe didn't ask. <laughs> Okay, so we'll do one more of the links and then I'll show you what it looks like on the bust. Okay, and we'll be done for the day. So six inch piece of wire, I'm coming down almost halfway with my chain nose pliers. Give it a bend. Okay, large bell making pliers are coming in. Okay, hold the tool still, take the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Rotate your pliers so you can take the wire over to the other side. Center it all up, okay? And then you wanna take that tail, guide it through the center of one of the loops on your section already, and then just snap the two together, okay? Bent chain nose pliers coming in to hold all of that. And notice, I hold the length and the tool. That just keeps everything out of my way. So I don't have to worry that anything is gonna fall out and get in the way of my wire wrapping here, okay? Wire wrap about three times. Then you wanna come in with your cutter tool, trim that off. And then you want to add your beads. So a rondelle, a glass pearl. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right, now in again with the chain nose pliers. But remember, don't go to the tip. You gotta come back just a little bit to accommodate for the larger wire and the wraps. Okay. Bell making pliers coming back in, up and over. Rotate, take the wire over and then straighten everything up, right? Give it a little adjustment to center it all up. And then you want to wire wrap between your loop and your beads. There was a question. I'm going to roll back on the comments here in just a second, but I want to go ahead and finish this so we can call it a day. All right. Coming in with my cutter tool. Cutting as close as I can get. And then pinching down. And there you go. It's so pretty, it's so pretty by itself, you know? It's so pretty without any of the dangles, but the dangles, of course, take it to a whole nother place. But it's gorgeous. If you've got beads, you know, if you've got some glass pearls or just a couple of gemstones and you don't have enough to do a whole necklace, use them as your center stone. Put some sort of accent on either side of it, it would be amazing. It would look really, really beautiful. It's a great, you know, because it takes up so much space. You can really kind of get the all of the bang for your buck. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. There was a question. When you say almost halfway, 
how much off from the middle? I know, okay, I'm glad you asked that. I know that's kind of confusing, right? So I happen to have one more piece of the wire here so I can kind of show you what I mean. So our piece of wire is six inches, right? And of course the middle is gonna be right at that three, right at the three inch mark. I'm just kind of like up maybe a quarter of an inch, okay? So the wire that I'm leaving here that I have on the working end to create my loop is about two and three quarters. <laughs> I know if you want to just come to the middle, you can. I don't think it's really going to make that big of a difference. I just, I don't, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why I didn't come straight to the middle. And I think it's because when I have three beads, for whatever reason, I feel like I need that extra little three quarters or a fourth of an inch. <laughs> so, yeah. I know, weird little things like that, but thank you for asking because that's, you know, I'm sure somebody else out there was wondering like, why did she do it that way? So, very nice, very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna put this up on the bus so you can see what it looks like, what it would look like on. And of course, we are gonna pretend that the ends are finished here, <laughs> okay? So let me turn you around because everything looks different when it's hanging and you it's hard when things are flat on the beading mat because a lot of times you can't see the entire piece so i'm gonna put it on the bust as if we had this on adjust my beads a little bit here just want to tidy it all up so it looks nice and pretty for you <laughs> all right so this is what it's going to look like when you've got it on so when you finish your ends if you add all the dangles that's what it's going to look like i really love the leather addition to it somebody had mentioned earlier the leather is a nice kind of it an accent to the to make it not so like you've got sparkly but it it kind of brings it down a little bit so it's not over the top so you can like get away with wearing this you know, with your casual clothes, and it's not super over the top elegant. The leather always kind of brings everything down to earth, right? And makes it wearable for everybody. So yeah, I like it. I like it. I think the leather was a nice touch. But again, yeah, contrast. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you for being my brain today. <laughs> it's a nice contrast. And any leather would work. Any kind of cord really would work. I just feel like that that kind of shade looks really good with the with the rondelles here. I'll hold it up a little bit closer so you can see. So, yeah, yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I think it's fun and it's something that you're already doing. You're just going to take it to another place. If you've been doing your wrapped loops, now it's time to play with those and see what else you can come up with, right? Because there's so many different things that you can do without making huge adjustments or learning a brand new skill. Just take what you've already learned, what you've already been practicing, and see what else you can do with it. And it doesn't have to be hard, right? It does not have to be hard. The great thing about this is that everything gets uploaded over to the YouTube channel. So if you've not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so. That is where you can watch these videos over and over and over again. If you need to fast forward, repeat, if you need to put me on mute, you can watch them over and over again to get the techniques down. And then of course, you are more than welcome to reach out and ask me if you've got questions. Um, sending your questions to the Sarah Ellis Designs business this page is probably the worst place in the world to send me questions just because I don't get the notifications for that. So either message me through the Facebook Messenger or if you signed up for the text messages, you can text message me directly. Um, and I don't get a notification for it right away, but I try to check it at least once a day so I can see your questions that are there, except on the weekends. Some of you um, have questions over the weekends and a lot of times I unplug. So just be aware. <laughs> If I don't get to you on a Saturday, I'll get to you on Monday, I promise. So, all right, guys, that's it for me. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your afternoon. I will be seeing you guys again on Thursday, same time, same place. That's 1 p.m., 1 p.m. Eastern time. And, of course, again on Friday. And I've got a Michaels class coming up on Saturday, too. So, you guys are going to get a lot of me this week. Um, we're going to be using on Thursday, I don't know what the project is yet, but we are going to be using Beadbox Bargains beads for that. And then you guys, Sam's Bead Shop beads, I got my notification. They're coming. So we're going to be using those next week. I can't wait. I'm so excited to see what's in the new, new one. Um, how do you keep the jewelry models clean? I don't. <laughs> that was a great question. How do you keep the jewelry, jewelry models clean? I don't. This one, you can't, I don't know if you can tell or not. See how dingy? They just get dingy. I don't know why. When when I 
worked in TV, we would cover them, right? We would cover them with plastic bags and that helps, but they still get dingy over time. I've tried to use magic erasers on them. Don't do that. I really and truly, I just rotate them. So I've got one right now that is in really good shape that I use for photographs and it's starting to get dingy. So I'll buy a new one and put that one in my rotation where I use it over here on camera. <laughs> I know that's not the answer you were looking for. You wanted me to say, oh, well, you're going to mix some borax with it. Sorry, they just get gross. I don't know why they do. They just do. And mine always end up with pin marks on them. So I don't know how that happens. <laughs> All right, that is it. That is it. Have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you guys not tomorrow, but the next day. Have a wonderful afternoon, you guys. Love you.